questions was to do with the Accountable Care Organization Division of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, but I think you really answered that by saying that you repeal Obamacare. Yeah, we have to repeal and start over. Um, <laughs> the question of earmarks. Um, we gen the question is, we generally expect them to be built into the budget. Why not take them out of the budget and spend less? There were years of uh, abuse with the earmark process. Um, and the way it works, and that's, it's a function of the government being too, too big and, and kicking off responsibility to the administrative agencies. You know, rather than Congress doing the job and figuring out where money's supposed to be spent, we have these huge programs that then get parsed out in the administrative agencies. And what used to happen is that Congress, members of Congress would flag things. It wouldn't be in the bill, it would be a little memo that, that came out afterwards, and that would be the quote, earmark. And it would tell the administrative agency, when you're administering that, that block grant program, make sure my district gets X for that project. And lo and behold, whoa, the pro they, they get the project. It was a hidden process. It was not transparent. If you have a project that is worthy of federal funding, that the federal taxpayers are going to pay for it, it's incumbent upon you to be transparent, to put it in a bill, and to debate it. And if you can convince people in an open process that this is something worthy of the federal government's support, and you get a majority vote on that, that's the way the process should work. Mr. Romney seems to want to fight with Iran and China and extend the war in Afghanistan. If he were to be elected, is the military prepared for the expanded activity, and how would it be paid for? Uh, we have number one responsibility of the federal government is to defend the country. But you have to be judicious in the way you're going to be projecting your military strength. And I think you learn lessons from history. Um, I, I, I would not have anticipated the length of the engagement in Iraq. Uh, um, and so, as a conservative, you know, I look at things and I think, you know, how do we use the power we have? I would not, for example, have gone into Libya the way this president did. Uh, um, you know, it, it, it's hard to justify what was the express American interest there. When you're looking at Iran, you know, we do not want Iran to have a nuclear bomb. Um, we have to take their rhetoric, rhetoric seriously. Um, and we have to apply as much pressure as possible to make sure that doesn't happen. China, you know, frankly, we've had a president going around the world bowing. <coughs> bowing to Beijing, bowing to world leaders, literally bowing. And, and that is not the way to project leadership. There's a difference between projecting strength and project, projecting leadership. You have to project a willingness to be open. But we have ideas that we can lead on. The, uh, the universal call to freedom that's written on the human heart that we can tap into. So for example in Iran, when we had the Green Revolution happening a couple of years ago, people aspiring for freedom, we should have been encouraging that instead of remaining silent. What about paying for the war? We got, you, and that's, hey, you gotta pay for your government. You gotta pay for your government, sir. Uh, and this is a problem I, I'm afraid that happened back in a, a, a when your country is threatened, when, when, it's, when it's attacked, you have to make choices. Um, President Bush never ran as a small government conservative. He ran on the expansion of the federal government in two significant ways. The, the Medicare Part D program and No Child Left Behind, which we require extensive uh, expenditures. You know, if, if you want to do that, you have to pay for it. You have to find other things that you're either going to cut or you have to say you're going to raise taxes. Um, and then the wars came along. You know, you look at, and it's, it was like the 1960s all over again. You know, we had the Great Society, but we we're funding Vietnam. You know, you have, being in government, you have to be responsible for making choices. What am, I, what am I going to be focused on when I'm making choices? Well, again, defense has to be number one. It's to do with the job of the country. We have, to, we have to defend the country. Social security, we have to keep the commitments we made to our seniors. Medicare, again, keeping the commitments we made. Infrastructure, you know, by now I'm running out of money. So then you start looking at, okay, well, what should, you know, we, we gotta make choices. We shouldn't be doing things like Solyndra, you know, a, a multi-billion dollar pro program at the Energy Department where we're losing money. Uh, um, you, you have to take a look at what's going on uh, um, with, with No Child Left Behind. How much are you spending on micromanaging our teachers? You know, is that something that should be left to the state? You have to go line by line in this process through the budget, which hasn't been done. It's not done when you throw everything in, in these big bills at the end of the fiscal year and say, oh, just get done or do a continuing resolution. <coughs> we need to be far more methodic and judicious in how we're making our decisions on spending. Um, 
one area where you and your opponent agree is being pro-life and pro-gun. So a woman cannot abort an unborn child, but almost any person can have a gun, yeah. including an assault weapon yeah. that can kill both the woman and the child. Please yeah. explain how you see these two positions as compatible. Well, I disagree with the characterization of, of uh, my opponent being pro-life, for example. Uh, and he got a 60% approval rating from National Right to Life. When I went to school, you got a 60 on a test, you got an F. Uh, um, there are votes in there, uh, both with respect to uh, um, uh, uh, abortion-related matters and, and frankly, the, the health care bill. Because pro-life is a continuum for, from unborn to elderly. And that's one of the main reasons you know, I'm opposed to Obamacare. It's got my core pro-life convictions. And what I'm fearful that it will do, uh, people have the right to defend themselves. Uh, um, Second Amendment clearly states that you have a right to keep and bear arms. Uh, um, you, you look at situations like post, uh, 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 when you have the breakdown of order, uh, in New Orleans after Katrina, where you had people with weapons. Um, and there may be a shop owner who wants, is threatened. You have to allow people to defend themselves. Um, and, and that's really what the Second Amendment is all about. Do you accept any exceptions on your pro-life? Uh, I'm pro-life. Pro I, 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 yeah, I, I think uh, human life begins at conception. Everybody in this room at one time in their life was an embryo. And I think we need to be treating uh, all human beings, innocent human beings, equally. People have to be allowed to live. You know, we, we don't compound one tragedy with another. And we have to come around as a community and support people who are facing a crisis pregnancy. And so, for example, my wife and I have been very supportive of crisis pregnancies. Um, a lot of this, frankly, you know, bank breaks down in funding decisions and, and where the government should be spending its money. And I just don't think the government should be spending money uh, for abortion services. Global warming, um, you know, I think for the last 15 years, temperatures have been stable. Uh, I think there is a need to take a close look at the science. I think we have, you know, Michael Mann, a professor up at Penn State, who said he wanted to, quote, hide the decline in global temperatures in his emails back and forth with the uh, East Anglia uh, uh, Educational Institute over there in, in, in England. Um, you, you know, we can look at data and say, yeah, it, it, it's warming, it's not warming. Um, but then you have to look at uh, whether it's anthropogenic, whether it's man-made, whether it's man-caused. And there, again, the science is out. You, you know, you can assume with me that it, it is anthropogenic, that it's man-caused, it is happening. And then look at the proposed remedies. And the proposed remedies simply wouldn't come near to the cost. Uh, uh, on the economy. Um, does anybody seriously think that China, for example, would stop using coal? They're building a new coal-fired power plant every week. It, you know, they're getting the cheap energy. And they're gonna get a comparative, c comparative and competitive advantage over us with cheap energy. You know, we should, we should be continue to study the issue. Uh, um, but again, uh, I, I, I would favor a science-based approach as opposed to an agenda-based approach. Do you support gay marriage? Why or why not? Yeah, I do not. Uh, yeah, marriage is between a man and a woman. Uh, um, it, it, it's been, it, it, it's, it's part of the natural law. Uh, uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, um, obviously, people should be treated with respect and dignity, no matter who they are. Uh, but I do think marriage, by definition, means a man and a woman. Uh, what regulations do you think there would be, should be, on Marcellus Shale drugs? I, I, number one, you have to make sure that uh, we're protecting the air and the, and the water. And we have a de Department of Environmental Protection who's charged with that responsibility. And, and they are executing that responsibility. So I would not be in favor of the EPA coming in and adding another layer on top of what the states are already doing. It's the state, people in the state understand the geography, the geology, uh, uh, what's going on, they're, they're, you know, they're closest to the situation. I do favor a bonding requirement for gas drilling companies that's adequate to compensate for any potential harm, because I think that's responsible. You know, you don't want a fly-by-night driller to come in and, and, and create an accident, and all of a sudden you turn around, the fly-by-night driller is gone, 
and there's no, no means to recover it. I think you can address that with a bond, an adequate bonding requirement. And a bond basically is an insurance policy. So if, if, if the drill, driller messes up, there's going to be a, a source of funds to compensate people. Do you believe in term limits? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I think people stay in Washington too long. I myself have pledged not to serve longer than 12 years if the people every two years decide to rehire me. And it is a hiring decision. Uh, um, I think 12 years is more than enough time to get something done. I think we need people with private sector experience to go in there and try to get things done. I, I think it's, you know, it doesn't do the body politic good to have people stay there and stay there and stay there and rack up $16 trillion in debt. I've also pledged not to take a congressional pension. Because when you're borrowing 42 cents of every dollar we're spending, I'm looking at my six kids thinking they're the ones who are going to be paying for that. And that's just not right. Um, actually, we have come, there's one more question that we asked Mr. Fritz, but you're doing so well on time that we'll have time to ask you a few more questions. So, um, how, if at all, have you been using social media to appeal to the uh, It's, uh, I guess I'm showing my age here. Um, you know, I try to do the Facebook thing, I try to do the Twitter thing. Frankly, I'm not big fans of Facebook and Twitter, but it, it does get the word out. Uh, we do a lot of emails, um, and, and uh, I try to do Twitter every time I'm running around to a new event so people you know, can track me where I'm going. It's a big district. We, it's about 120 miles long, so it's nice mm -hmm. to keep people informed of where you're at. Uh, um, and it's, it, you know, it, it's, it, it's nice because you can follow other folks too and what they're doing. You can follow news outlets and hear what the stories are, uh, and uh, we use it, you know, and, and uh, that's about it. <laughs> I used to become fans, okay?